Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel, or welcome to the channel if you're new here. My name is Death by Pony. Today we're hopping back into our life. So without further ado, let's hop in. You uh, schooled your expression, the picture of innocence. Whatever could he be implying, there was nothing le nothing the less bit absurd about this request. Baxter's features relaxed into a look of fond regard as his eyes searched your face for a moment one hand was tucked casually into the back pocket though some of the tension appeared to be gone his stance was still one of indecision contemplation for some reason you imagination conjured up a vision of him at a woodland crossroads standing just as he was now carefully weighing which way to go at this point you felt as though you could guess the thought process he was going through even if it wasn't he wasn't saying it out loud. For Baxter, it was all a question of the eventual outcome, whether everything was over. He looked back on this moment. How would he best like to remember it? Should he end things here and avoid any further mishaps? Or should the night continue with the accompanying risks of additional regrets? Baxter didn't only aim to make the most of his time by doing what he liked, but by meticulously crafting the experience and emotions he gave. You sighed inwardly, recalling simpler times. If only you were another case of which frozen dessert to pick from an ice cream truck. At length, his mind was made up. Baxter cleared his throat and straightened his stance, facing his throne. Thank you for the offer, James. It's very kind of you to be so generous with your time. I should like to take you up on that suggestion. If it's not, no inconvenience. A drink would be lovely. A rush of relief hit. Thank goodness you still had a chance to turn things around. He likely had a similar thought, though your idea on what would achieve that were, uh, were certainly different. Flashing a cheerful smile, you unlocked your front door and led the way inside. Baxter dutifully followed, pausing only to wipe his shoes on the doormat, just as Ma would want. All the lights were on in the living room, and there was a brief flash of panic at the prospect you lured Baxter into a run-in with your family the worst possible time. As luck would have it, when you poked your head around the doorway, the room was empty. You couldn't hear movement. You were alone for now. You gestured for Baxter to sit down and make himself comfortable. He graciously accepted the invitation. Rather than crash on the couch, he sauntered over to the table and pulled up a chair, prim and proper to the last. Having got this far, you willfully hosted uh, hostly components of your brain into motion. After seeing a professional like the bartender at work, you had some standards to live up to. First things first, technically, the technical reason for why you invited him in. What do you want to drink? We have juice, milk, other things. Ah, oh, just water, please. I don't have the appetite for much else right now. His reply came without hesitation, but it lacked the usual degree of confidence you'd come to expect from him. The sound of it spoke volumes. While nobody could go so far as to call him fragile, there was no denying that Baxter was long ways, a long ways from his usual bold self. Gotcha, one water coming right up. You reached for a glass, a pair of glasses and decided to stick with water yourself to keep things simple. After pouring some chilled water from the fridge, you brought the drinks over to the table and sat down across from Baxter. Thank you. Baxter slipped, sipped his water, then placed it back down in front of him. It struck you fully how bizarre the situation would appear to anybody who happened to be watching. The two people, one of whom was dressed to the nines while the other was casually sitting at the dining room table and gingerly sampling glasses of plain water. You mentally w whispered an apology to the tender of the jazz bar. You were a little ashamed at your feeble imitation of his skills. It was a good thing your moms weren't around to see this either. They'd never let you live it down, not in a million years. But that was all besides the point. You knew, and Baxter knew, that the pretext of coming over for a drink was simply that a, thickly, a thinly veiled excuse. Only a very particular kind of emergency would necessitate visiting a neighbor's house for nothing more than a glass of water. And yet, in a way, it had been an emergency, a friendship emergency. He sincerely hoped that this brief, proud moment would give you both the chance to clear the air and reach some kind of mutual understanding. Baxter reached down to fiddle with the tumbler of water before him, though without lifting it to his lips again, stared down into it, searching. After a while, he I spoke. deeply apologize. I feel I must sound like a broken record at this point, but it's exceedingly considerate of you to extend your hospitality this far. I'm grateful. His gaze didn't lift, but one corner of his mouth did. It looked as though it took some effort. He maintained it just long enough to be sure you'd seen it, and then it dropped like a heavy weight. He quietly sighed once and thought to catch his breath. He continued. To be honest. I must confess, however, if it were up to me, none of this would be happening. 
I find myself regretting my actions up to this point. Things would have been for the better if I had not said anything after the show, or if you hadn't treated them as if they mattered. Uh, it was a brief moment of frustration, and it caused so much trouble, and evening ruined by nothing and for nothing. And this was already my second go at inviting you out for an occasion. We don't need to retread what happened the first time. He tossed his head to one side and made a better sound with his I... tongue. I should be better than this. It irks me so much to make the same mistake over and over. I, His voice trembled with frustration. His eyes darkened downcast. He dropped to a forceful whisper, repeating the words as if to convey himself of them. And as if to nail them to his chest. I was better than this, wasn't I? Uh, why do you feel you have to be? I think you're wonderful. You aren't better or worse. You're just yourself. You're acting like the characters in the show, you know. I don't need you to do that. I just want you to talk to me back so you have done anything wrong. I think you're wonderful. Baxter finally lifted his eyes to meet yours. Then they were narrowed, their intentions unreadable. The cruel curve of his mouth spoke for itself, however. With a jolt, you realized it was a look of a poorly disguised mockery, and still, you could tell it wasn't meant for you. Ah, uh, when that cutting smile opened up, the words came pointed and pained and sharp. It was all aimed in words at himself. The whole situation is asinine. I haven't known you long enough to be causing this kind of trouble. I'm quite literally a stranger, and I won't even be here long enough for that to change. As welcoming as you all are here, that can't be forgotten. This was I was only ever supposed to be part of the fun, worthwhile piece of summer scenery. Someone who added the extra experience not held it back. You shouldn't have to baby me to sit there and spend your time making me feel better when I don't keep it together. His hands were clenched on the table, knuckles shock knuckles a shocking of white. The mess I'm the mess I'm in, the mornings, the drama I cause the evenings, the person I am when the show is over. Those aspects shouldn't be any of your concern, and I don't prove that support to you, do I? And how could I when I don't know you? No, it's not fair to make you worry or worse guilty over what happened to me. What matters is that when we're together, it's for the pleasant parts of existence. The less ideal shades of life can be managed separately. He slumped back a little in his chair, the power having gone out of his voice. That's all I wanted. The blood was still pounding in your ears, witnessing Baxter like this, as you'd never seen him before. This equal parts exhilarating and shocking. His inner conflict was now exposed. Wire. Um, how many times had you sat across from these in these past few days, and how was it only now that it felt like you were truly seeing the person in the chair opposite? You took a moment to process your thoughts, setting your breath. It was the last, here at last was the crux of the matter. It was clear that when Baxter came to Sunset Bird, he had set himself a series of rules, rules about how much to involve himself, how much of an impact to make. Like the tourist concept, he'd leave only footprints behind, but take it, but taken to the extreme. There wasn't a space for him to be complicated, to have negative emotions, to show different sides of himself to anybody. Do so now would be a derelication of duty. You weren't going to criticize him wanting his privacy. It was important to him and you respect to that. But this kind of framing, one where he had an obligation to minimize himself for others' benefit, it was only causing pain. In spite of what he felt was right, you cared too much about him now to let him carry on like this. Cautiously, you opened your mouth. Morning, Baxter. Evening, Baxter. All the Baxters. I like you. It's too late, Baxter. You're not a stranger. You're my friend. No one cares if it's someone you... If sometimes you have a day, bad day, so I am around. Getting to know you better is what makes it all worthwhile. You deserve more than that. Um... I'm conflicted. I want to do this one. I also want to do this one. I'm going to go with this one. You spoke earnestly and with as much compose as you could manage. Right now, more than anything else, Baxter needed to know how wrong he was. He wasn't a burden. His feelings didn't hurt you. You tried your best to communicate things this to him. And then another thought made itself known to you. One that ached under your ribs. You couldn't help but give it voice. We finally meet again after all these years. You have 
been nobody to me for a long time. He said your piece and went silent. Then the house lay still and the windows were empty portraits black with night. The only sounds was that of of both your breathing. Baxter's eyes had been locked with yours during this speech, the last heat of his frustration smoldering with them. Now in quiet, you finally felt the embers fade completely. His gaze slowly slid one side and then down. He swallowed. Your. You. I. The sound drifted to you across the table. Small and hushed a sigh. Thank you. It was said simply, with no pretense or caveats. Baxter had given up the fight with himself for now and accepted what you had told him. You let your body unclench as you watched the crease in Baxter's brow begin to disappear. A hand emerged from beneath the table, lifting his glass as if the water closed eyes. You took this as a cue that the discussion had run its course. There was no guarantee that things would change going forward, and you weren't so arrogant as to think that Baxter's behavior would be altered all at once. Nothing drastic anyway. Uh, he listened to your feelings, but who could really say uh, how it would impact what happened in the future? The past couple of days held a mirror up to Baxter, showing him reflection that wounded him, wounded him, cutting too close to the bone. There were hurts there that ran deeper than he let you reach. It didn't mean he mistrusted you. It may not have been a matter of trust to begin with, but you hoped that with time Baxter might come to count on the fact that there was at least one person out there who wouldn't that would accept him. You wanted to give him that. A souvenir to remember you by. The minutes passed and slipped by. And sip by sip, the two of you drank your way towards the bottom of your water glass. Silence can be called effortlessly comfortable, but it wasn't awkward. Uh, Compan... Companable, perhaps? Baxter sucked the in the last drops from his cup, then moved to stand unhurried. Thank you again. It was refreshing, but the water in the conversation still I should be going. He was matter of fact with air of calm and finality. You weren't able to disagree. You nodded and rose in parallel, moving to take the glass back over to the kitchen. You managed what you had set out to achieve. It was all right to let things end here for the time being. The night had spun around your way, and hopefully Baxter could see it as a positive when he reflected on it. You walked with him across the living room and the front door with his back to you. You heard him gently begin to I say something. I appreciate the understanding. I appreciate you taking the time to discuss this with me for listening in spite of, well, he gestured to himself, the meaning clear. Uh, before you could tell him not to mention it, he reached for the front door and came face to face to you. There was a mischievous grin on his face. He welcomed it like an old friend. But now, since the final act is over... How would you rate this evening? I sincerely hope that it was acceptable on the whole. This question you had laughed. At, the question had a laugh to it, and underneath there wasn't the faintest hint of self-mockery from before, but now it was toothless, empty of malice in the entire room in good humor. You couldn't help but snort a laugh, understand, and affectionate, oh, Baxter, how quickly he'd recovered from his footing. Don't worry, it's a solid hit with the judges. You hadn't lost your touch. I had a good time. Thanks for a fun evening out and for stopping by too. My pleasure. Don't mention it. The pleasure was all mine. Good night, James. See you soon. Until next time, good sir. Have a nice night. Bye. You touched his arm lightly. You wave goodbye. He leaned in and lightly squeezed your shoulder in return. There was a fondness to which comforted you. Baxter liked you, even if he didn't want, even if he didn't want you to know him. You were sure of that much. And then he managed good on his promise to depart. Baxter stepped out into the dark night. The door shut behind him, and the long day came to a close along with it. When he was gone, you remained in the entryway a while, lost in thought. You'd see him again, perhaps tomorrow, perhaps not. He might have plans, but there would be a next time. You saw your face reflect in the dark glass of the window by the door, and found yourself wondering which Baxter you'd meet when the day came. Whoever he was, whenever it was, you'd be there. Damn, that was fucking long. <laughs> I think I did like six, six like 20 to 40 minute recordings because that's generally the space I record between. 
like as little as 20 and as much as 40. I think one of them was actually 45. But that was long. <laughs> so hope you enjoyed that. We'll stop into the next one next time. <laughs>